All right. Welcome, everybody. PayPal and Patreon are down below if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can. So, been working on this for a bit. It's time to do a video going through the actual math behind the failure of solar power, specifically talking about solar PV or solar panels. And to start with, before getting into even the resource constraints, that are going to not allow solar power to really replace anything. Even in the supposed half solar, half wind power scenario, there are a few upfront issues with solar power that people or proponents of it just really choose to ignore. Firstly, there is the one that they do speak about because you can't avoid it. And that is that obviously you're not going to get any power from solar panels at night. So that is 12 hours of the day that they are effectively useless at. However, even during the day, you're not actually getting 12 hours of whatever power capacity a particular solar panel field is rated for. Because remember, the day goes through its course as the Earth rotates. And as the Earth rotates, the sun or the sunlight is coming in at different angles from nearly completely horizontal and thus effectively useless at dawn and dusk. So the hour or hour and a half or so immediately after sunrise and immediately before sunset is effectively a time period where the solar panels are still generating next to nothing. And the few hours following that or preceding that are the amount of power being generated climbing up and then falling down a very steep slope somewhere in between zero and the supposed rated capacity of the solar field the solar panel array will only actually be generating its stated power amount for about four hours of the day each day when the sun is most directly overhead and thus the solar panels are receiving basically straight on direct sunlight or in reality as close to straight on direct sunlight as you can get depending on where on the Earth you are, because then that also affects your tilt away from the sun. So in reality, solar power actually only generates a meaningful grid supplying amount of energy for about four hours of the day, and then you can give it an extra one, maybe two hours on each side of that as it's at the upper end of climbing up or the end of falling down at the curve and that is again assuming that it is clear skies with zero cloud layer whatsoever and that is also in the summer everyone you see because of the earth's axial tilt the northern hemisphere where most people and most of civilization is is tilted away from the sun in winter and the southern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun during the months that are technically referred to as summer. But for the winter or the tilted away months of either hemisphere, the solar panels will actually be generating on average about 40 to as much as 60% less because of the increased tilt away angle. So that in and of itself presents problems, obviously, since at the moment, the world on average averages about three and a half terawatts of electricity demand across all global power grids at any given time. And you would instantly assume on basic logic that you could build three and a half terawatts of solar power capacity. However, that's not the case. Remember that even if you discount the fact that even during the day, solar panels only generate their nameplate capacity for about four hours at peak sunlight overhead. Even if you gave them all 12 hours of daylight, half of the solar panels in the world would be in night and not working. Though in reality, you'd actually have to build twice that amount. And also then you have to account for the whole winter effect, which will use the lower number of 40% less. So instead of that total seven terawatts, not even accounting for the fact that it actually fluctuates up and down through different seasons and throughout the day. Just going with the three and a half average, you would need seven for the doubling, giving the panels the credit of generating solar power during all 12 hours of the daylight. But then having to account for the winter, you would actually have to build another three terawatts or so of capacity onto that, maybe four. So up to a total of 11, 10 or 11 to account for the reduced power generation during the winter. 
And then on top of this, there is also the resource constraints angle. And that is that solar panels, even the basic ones, require not the most abundant resources. Predominantly silver is the main issue at face value. However, if you want to reduce the amount of solar panels you need, and thus reduce the amount of silver that needs to be consumed, the more efficient solar panels that would thus allow you to not need to build as many, and thus not need as much silver, would be actually even more constrained because the higher up the efficiency ladder you go, the rarer and rarer materials get required for those, such as tellurium, and eventually germanium, and I apologize for the potential noise of my air conditioner in the background, but running through some of this math just so you can see, solar panels require about one third of an ounce of silver per square meter. And to just run out some of the basic math, the generic solar panels that don't require more valuable things, just the silver predominantly, will generate about 200 watts per square meter during those four peak hours of the day at, you know, optimal direct sunlight. So you run through some basic math to get some amounts from that. You'll find 10 square meters then gets you two kilowatts. A thousand square meters gets you 200 kilowatts. A square kilometer gets you 200 megawatts. And 1,000 square kilometers or 1 billion square meters gets you 200 gigawatts. So 200 gigawatts, or about 40% of the average U.S. power generation requirement, that is about 8 billion square meters of solar panels. And 1 billion times one-third for the number of ounces gets you 333 million ounces. And then, to upscale it to what you need for terawatts, multiply that by 5, and you get 1.67 billion ounces of silver required for a terawatt of power generation from solar panels at the four peak hours of the day. Subtracting the supposedly already existing one terawatt of solar power capacity, then subtracting that from 3.5 means you would means you would need to build another 2.5. So 2.5 times that 1.67 billion gets you 4.16 billion ounces of silver required. And then if you were to build enough solar to cover the world's actual total generation capacity that exists, then minus one from that is, and minus one off of that 8.5 is 7.5, and 7.5 times 1.67 billion ounces gets you 12.53 billion ounces, and will give solar the non-existing credit of generating its nameplate capacity power for 12 hours of every day, even though that is not how that works, and assume that green energy proponents are going for a half solar, half wind scenario. So we'll ignore the nighttime issue and not have to double that number, and a cursory glance might make you think that doesn't sound like that big of a deal. Currently about 800 million ounces of silver are mined each year, or 0 0.8 billion. However, that is an issue. Because global silver production from silver mines has already peaked back in the mid-2010s and has declined by about 10% since then. It's going to be falling down in kind of a gradual stair-step formation, probably losing about 10% of output level every decade or decade and a half or so. So right now it's about 800 million ounces per year. But come the 2030s, it's probably going to be down close to 700 or a little bit above 700. And also, again, you have to work within that yearly limit. You don't just get to magically use all of the silver to make solar panels because we do use the silver for other things. We do need it for other things. A lot of the chemical processes and industrial stuff that allows modern civilization to exist a lot of it is needed for electronics, the computers and devices you're currently watching this video with. Theoretically, you could ban the use of silver in jewelry if you could get away with that, but that really wouldn't make that much of a dent. So even if the numbers are still decent in terms of what's coming out of the mines for now, you have a limited constrained percentage of that that you can actually use, and that is already being exceeded actually 
and is only being permitted to do so because there's a lot, because there are above ground inventories of silver held by investment firms and the like that are being pulled out of. They were close up to about 2 billion ounces in storage above ground. However, over the last number of years since the production peak, those have been drawn down to about 1 billion. And the rate has rapidly accelerated over the last three years or three or four years because of, as you can see, circled on this chart, how quickly the amount of silver being used to make solar panels has jumped up. So yes, this is absolutely an issue. On that, you might think we could get around by needing less solar panels overall if we simply used more efficient solar panels. As the generic ones, the ones we spoke about, are about 20-something percent efficient at converting sunlight to energy. There's ones that are closer to 30 percent and can do about 250 watts per square meter. However, those require tellurium, which is even less abundant. And the generic math for tellurium works out to about 100 tons required for every gigawatt of solar power capacity. And so 1,000 square kilometers, which gave us 200 gigawatts on generic solar panels, would give us 250 gigawatts. However, 250 times 100 tons is 25,000 required tons. And jumping straight up the ladder to half solar, half wind, so half of the world's power generation capacity being replaced with solar, not even accounting for the 40% less in the winter or the whole only generating its nameplate capacity for four hours of the day thing, just at face value, that is half of eight and a half is four and a quarter or 4.25 terawatts, which would translate to 425,000 tons of tellurium, which is just not out there. The current rate of tellurium recovery or tellurium mining is fluctuating around 700, 800 tons per year at best. So even if we went this way and the rate of recovery stayed exactly the same, that would take centuries to actually get enough to build all of those much more efficient solar panels. However, tellurium isn't even a solo product. It is a byproduct of copper mining. So it's inherently tied to the rate of copper mined out of the earth and recovered. And it's not like the global rate of copper mining is going to go up forever. It's going to peak and or plateau at a specific point like any other resource. However, we can skip past the tellurium and have even more efficient solar panels that are up in the 30s in their percentile, generating 300 watts or more per square meter. However, these require germanium, which is much more rare even than gold. And it comes out to about 1.4 tons per gigawatt. And at 300 watts per square meter, the 1,000 square kilometers from before will give you about 300 gigawatts. And that's a simple 300 times 1.4 equals 420 tons required. And doing the half global provision, not even accounting for the fact that global power capacity and power demand is going to keep going up as, you know, the remaining third world and second world countries continue rising economically because they're not going to accept just remaining in their current economic states for the sake of not pushing global electricity demand up any higher. Even just assuming that global power consumption remains exactly the same and never goes up again, half of eight and a half is four and a quarter, so 4.25. 4.25 terawatts times the 1.4 tons per gigawatt gives you just short of 6,000 tons of germanium required. And at current, germanium is being extracted at a rate of about 140 tons per year. So it would take 50 plus years at current rates to get all of that germanium. And also there's the fact that, again, you're not using all the germanium for those solar panels because we need it for other things like electronics, fiber optic cables, satellites, and even worse, similar to tellurium, germanium is so rare that it's effectively, that it's most effectively recovered as a byproduct of zinc mining and coal mining. 
And we all know the direction that green energy proponents want coal mining to go in. It's down. So that would inherently reduce the amount of germanium recovery. And global output from zinc mines has already peaked or rather plateaued out for over a decade now. Despite increasing demand and rising prices, it has not been able to get pushed back up in any significant way. So that is already stalling germanium recovery rates. So this route will not exactly work out either, even assuming that power generation remains exactly the same and that it's a 50-50 solar wind mix and the wind is magically working all the time, then that 4.25 terawatts of solar power will still not be working at night. So that is at least 12 hours that you would need to supplement it with and they don't want to do that with gas or coal or nuclear. They want to do it with batteries. So remember, that terawatt capacity is for each hour. So to supplement that overnight, you would not need to build 4.5 terawatts or 4.5 terawatts of battery capacity. You would need to build 4.5 terawatts times the 12 hours of night. So you would need to build out roughly 50 terawatt hours of battery capacity to supplement the solar. And actually then you'd, you'd have to add on at least another hour on each end because again, an hour after sunrise and before sunset, solar is still effectively worthless. So that actually brings it up to more like 58 or so. And that's only based on the day-night cycle and the angle of the sunlight during the day. So there you go. There's a bunch of low effort white numbers and text and math on a black screen for the most part. Some pictures and graphs thrown in here and there. But that's it for this one for all the solar power math. Thank you for sticking around and listening. You can like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. PayPal and Patreon are down there if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can. There's a link in the description to a Google Drive folder with all kinds of different docs filled with graphs, charts, data compilations across all kinds of different things. There's a link to my photography Instagram as well, and a link to my cat's YouTube channel in the top in comment. May God bless and protect all of you, and I will see you all around next time.